Hi, everybody, and welcome to Eco Physiotherapy Presents Health, Wellness, and Lifestyle. I am, my name is Madeline Golick, and I'm a pelvic health physiotherapist and the owner of Eco Physiotherapy. And I am here with Marco Capone. Hey, everybody. And uh, before we get into um, uh, talking more about our guests, I just wanted to let you know that this video is pre-recorded, but uh, Marco and I will be uh, available live via chat when this is running. And of course, we will have our contact details uh, presented at the end of the show. So make sure you stay tuned um, and uh, we'll let you know how to get in contact with us. Anyways, uh, so Marco Capone is a personal trainer, so we're going to talk a little bit about exercise and some of the cool things that he's into, but I thought maybe we would start off by you letting the audience know, like, why you got into personal training. Awesome. So, so a bit of my background and why I got into uh, personal training or being an exercise coach is that if we rewind back to when I was in grade 10, I was playing, playing pretty high level soccer at the time, OISL level soccer, which is basically the last level at the time before semi-professional or professional soccer. I was never a semi-pro or professional soccer player, but that's where I was at in grade 10. And in grade 10, I suffered a, an ACL tear, tore my ACL, um, as well as some damage to the meniscus um, and MCL. And so, you know, in our world, they call that a bit of the unhappy triad, so to speak. Yeah. Knee injury for, for more layman's terms. Yeah, so like, he hurt his knee. Yeah. And so it's a very significant injury. And that is what sparked me going down the path of having a, a thankfully healthy obsession with, you know, kinesiology and psychology. And how does someone learn how to move better in a way that they will prevent injuries in the future? And in the meantime have a healthier way of life as well. There's a lot that goes into health of ligaments, joints, muscle tissue, as you know, in great depth. There's factors in training and outside of training that, that help a lot. So. so that's great. Yeah. And, and, you know, sometimes things happen in life that leads us down the road to become who, who we are. Um, mm. so I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about what some, what are some of the benefits for somebody having a personal trainer? Like why would somebody want a personal trainer? Good question. So I think for some people, they realize some, for some people, it might be as basic as accountability. Uh, in a lot of cases though, it's people leveraging someone who has the expertise to say, you know what, there's, there's people around me. There's a few people around me who I could choose to leverage to get the result I want in a given area. So in my case and in your case, that has to do with uh, physical health and well, well-being. Now, in, in your case, it's very specific and to a very high level of, of intricate understanding in, in the pelvic region, for example. Yeah. In my case, it might be more in a general uh, kinesthetic sense of how does someone move in a way that they're taking care of their body and that's uh, leading to them getting in better shape by building lean muscle tissue in a healthy way and in a safe way and all the benefits that come from that. So people usually, to answer your original yeah. question is, yeah. what are the benefits? Feeling comfortable about training and getting the physical results you want. And that leads to the uh, you know, benefits emotionally, mentally, Absolutely. things like that. We, and we know that mm -hmm. exercising has uh, so many benefits in lifestyle, in mental health, uh, and also just you know, reducing the risks of developing other diseases later yeah. on, later on Absolutely. in life. But Absolutely. it can be sometimes hard for people to like get into it. Like we can say, you know, exercise is good for you, but like, you know, it's just, it's so hard for people to get started, Yeah. you know, and, and to get that motivation, uh, to schedule out the schedule out the time. And then they'll, you know, join a gym and, you know, don't know what to do and don't know how to do it safely. And then of course they end up at physiotherapy. So yeah. That's yeah. a benefit, right? Like you can help them say, okay, well, let's introduce you to some of the equipment. Like what are your goals? Yeah. And this is how we can use it. This is how we start you off and make sure that you're doing it in proper form so that don't, don't get hurt at the gym. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what, in your experience, what do you find are some of the common barriers that people have to like staying active? Yeah, good question. I think it boiled, that boils down to the two most common ones that you would hear that I hear is not enough time or not enough money, right? And the not enough time and not enough money, if you think one step even higher level there is 
someone prioritizing. What you're hearing is, this is how I'm able to prioritize my life, which is okay. If someone isn't in a place where they want to very clearly prioritize their physical well-being, that's up to each individual person, right? That's not up to people like us to make decisions for other people. But for someone who does want to prioritize it, but doesn't know how, their barriers are, hey, I don't have enough time because of my children at a certain age, at really whatever age it is, that can be a barrier mentally for some people. Or I don't have the money, which again could actually just be a a mental framework issue rather than not actually having money to a bit of money to leverage someone, right? But that goes for not even just training or physiotherapy. That goes across using any services or buying any products or anything that you could leverage in your own life in any area, business, personal life, relationships, physical, emotional, mental well-being, spiritual, whatever it is. And so it applies to us as well or myself as well as a trainer. Right. Um, and, and you were mentioning, you know, that not having the time. Um, I think one of the great things about how you, you know, service clients is like, you can go anywhere. Like you yes. can, you can train them at home. So if you have like a little gym at home, you're able to yeah. go into their home, get them set up, get them on a routine and then like see them every week or two times a week and go through it with them, which keeps accountability. So that might be, um, like one solution, yes. um, instead of going to a gym, which it might be really intimidating for some people. Like I don't like going and working out mm-hmm. in weights and having uh, the idea of having other people watch me working out. Um, that might be sort of yeah. a barrier. So a lot of people aren't into that. That's right. And especially females and rightfully so in a lot of cases, you might feel like, eh, there's people who are maybe staring at me or whatever that happens, you know, truthfully that will happen in a gym environment and especially females aren't as comfortable about that because they're usually the subject of that. Whereas guys are happy to go to the gym because they feel very comfortable there. Right. You know? Right. Um, yeah. And yeah, I service. So my form of personal training actually is in home personal training, as you're alluding to, that's yeah. actually the majority of what my practice is. It's actually in home training in the Mississauga region, Oakville, Oakville region. And I also do like, you know, phone call consults and stuff like that. So it can go a bit beyond that geographical scope, but you're right for the people that I get to deliver service to, it is very convenient for them in Mm. that light that it's pretty much the most convenient form of leveraging someone like myself. Right. Or if you, if they have a gym in the condo, that's right. Condo uh, gyms. I train a lot of people in condo gyms. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that gives a great option. And I, I think you were also mentioning like that you could, they could even bring a friend, right? So yes. you can train That's right. more than That's one right. person. So, you know, two girlfriends who are, yes. you know, wanting to get, you know, more active and hold each other accountable, but then have you there holding yeah. them accountable as well. So it's like a double accountability. And, and the beauty of that is, is many fold. What the extra benefit of that is for them is that not only do I get to teach each of them exactly what I'm looking for and how they're moving in different patterns, but yeah. When there's two people together, I get to show both of them what to look for in each other because Ah. oftentimes I'm looking for them to execute on the programming outside of just my time with them. Like I'm not the type of person to go out of my way to encourage someone to say, hey, I want to see you like three times a week. That's not what my default is, right? right? My default is let's see me once a week or in some cases, maybe twice a week. Right. And you need to be able to execute one or two, or depending on the number of times outside of that on your own, right? So if they're also going to be doing their training together outside of being with me, yeah. then they now get to see those intricacies for each other as well. That's amazing. You know what? I didn't actually even think yeah. about that, like, you know, showing each other to what, what to, to look yeah, out for, because, which can be really helpful. Exactly. Because yeah. oftentimes the way it works in what you would maybe term semi-private training, right? Where you're training yeah, more than yeah. just one person is that... Oftentimes when we're doing the movement portion of things, one of them is doing it set. And then while the other person's taking a rest, the other person's performing a set. So I'm able to have quality attention on both of them while the other person has a brief recovery from right. that set. And then they're watching each other and we have like this unison together in the training. So yeah, yeah. that's, that's amazing. So I wanted to ask you, because maybe this might be something that people are wondering if they're like, well, you know, I, I might want to use a personal trainer, but you know, is it more expensive to have somebody like you versus like a trainer at a gym? Um, how does that, you know, great question. And you know, what's interesting, (laughs) 
quite often I get questions from people who are calling or being referred to me by people who have had good experience with me in the past as well. Yeah. And one of the questions is, well, are your, is your pricing like, where does it range? Where does it rank in terms of the range of pricing for personal yeah. training? And my answer is pretty much it's, so it's within, it's, how do I explain this? Some gyms charge easily over a hundred dollars per session for personal training. That's maybe for one person. And in some right. cases that's for as little as half an hour. Some gyms even set up their programming to cater to the person who feels that they can get a, you can get a great quality workout in in half an hour, yeah. but they make it nice and efficient to, to run that half an hour. And then they generate tons of money per per hour in a gym setting because the marketing's there. So if you go to a, a big box gym, they've got everything set up where you're willing to pay, say a lot of money for, for the training. Yeah. And then you'll have um, other gyms that might charge less for personal training. And then you'll have um, people in private practice that will have their whole own spectrum. Yeah. Uh, in some cases, I don't even know how low it might go or how high it could go. I know right. of different trainers who do their own training, have their own practices and they're training, charging people over $150 a session. I know other people that will mm. probably charge a bare minimum of 30 to $40 a session. There is a, that is a wide range Absolutely. of pricing and how does one navigate the whole spectrum there? And so what I often do is I encourage people to say, look, I know I've already mapped out a good amount of pricing in different areas for different, say, mm. training. Here's what I have to show you. And there's a spectrum there. Yeah. Some training is more affordable than my training. Right. Some trade training is more expensive. Yeah, absolutely. And then from there, I encourage people to say, actually, go explore more on your own. Don't just take my word for it. Go explore the comparisons because I can't keep up to date every day or every week to have the update of the whole landscape. Right, right. But I think training should be reasonably priced, you know, yeah. and that uh, someone should be thinking more of leveraging someone who can mentor them and guide them rather than seeing them super frequently versus just the price tag right. of the one session. And know? I think self-efficacy is really important, you know, taking it upon, giving the, the client the skills and the knowledge to be able to do for themselves, right? right? Like even in my physiotherapy practice, like one of my goals is, is always to try to give things that patients can do at home so that they rely on me less and less. hundred percent. Um, so I think we're similar in that 100%, sense. hundred percent. Yeah. And I think people appreciate that. Absolutely. And, and I'm upfront about it. You know, we're, we're coaches. We're here to guide people along their, their journey. We're not necessarily here to do it for you. We're, yeah. we're there to, to, to give you all the tools necessary so that you can move forward yes. and be able to do that for the rest of your life. That's right. Right. It's a skill that you're learning for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to kind of change gears a little bit yeah. uh, because, uh, you know, I was very lucky to hear a presentation last week that uh, you were doing with uh, with Reed at Athletes Matrix. And I think the work that you guys are doing with young athletes, um, not only just in a strength and training um, perspective, but like acting as mentors and role models. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be really important for those uh, of you out there who have uh, kids who are, you know, uh, very athletic, who are maybe aspiring to being professional athletes. Um, I think the work that you're doing uh, could really, really benefit. So I thought we could talk a little bit about what you're doing. Yeah, there. yeah, for sure. So part of my practice now is actually facilitating strength and conditioning with a spectrum of athletes in a local facility called the Athlete Matrix. And yeah, so you're wondering, you know, what what are the ongoings there and what are the benefits to the yeah, children there, right? Yeah. So it's actually a unique thing. It is a different type of training than, say, training people necessarily in homes because we have such a great facility there that's all sport-specific training. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, in terms of the mentor side of things, the for example, Reed and myself and some of the other coaches there are – mature enough but yet young enough that these children in their teenage years usually they're between the ages of under 12s to under 18 so about 12 to 18 years and because we're not their parents and because they can kind of relate to us yeah the guys and girls there yeah they take our genuine advice more more seriously yeah. they listen their ears perk up and they take it seriously and they check in with us yeah. they update us in a way that's different than than say some advice they'd get from their parents. Like for example, parents will obviously encourage their kids to study hard and sleep properly. Like that's something that can just so easily be glossed over yeah, in, a, in a parent child dynamic. But when you're strength and conditioning coach that you relate to on some other level, 
Mm -hmm. explains why it's so important to get the rest and explains what's going on during rest in detail. But in that kind of professional but friendly way. Yeah, yeah. You see the difference. You see that they actually start to make changes while they're under your kind of wing. Yeah, so. which I think is, you know, which I think is important as, you know, um, young teenagers are exercising and, uh, you know, focusing a lot of attention on improving uh, some of these other aspects might not get as much attention. And of course, hearing it from your parent, I mean, you know, we were all teenagers. <laughs> it was literally one ear out the other. Right. Yeah. But but hearing it from, yeah. you know, somebody that they do look up to, that they work with, that they can see, OK, you know, they've they've been in professional sports or they, you know, are in the field of strength and conditioning, you know, maybe, I, maybe I should, you know, listen to sort of yes. what, what they're saying. Yes. Um, so what are some of the like sports team, like, is it sports teams? Is it individual? Like, yeah, so it's, it's a mix of both different athletes will be coming in, in groups. They might have a good portion of their team training there as a group. Some children, their parents want them to have an extra session per week, maybe of private training to have an extra hyper focus mm. on the mechanics or certain uh, movement deficiencies in them that they want to improve. Because sometimes there's a lot on the line. Um, a lot of these children are getting scholarships. They're getting ready to go to certain universities or colleges where there's scholarships involved. Yeah. Um, now, not necessarily true for some of the younger ones yet, but and there is a spectrum of athletes in there, right? right? So some of the athletes, as you know, are Team Ontario level, Team Canada level. But right. a lot of them are like amateur athletes that just – their parents just care enough about them that they want them to be in a facility where they're making improvements in those areas of their life. They just right. want to make sure their children are well taken care of. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so maybe walk us through a little bit like, you know, so you have a, you know, a kid coming in, let's say an individual, um, you know, let's say baseball. So yeah. what, what would, what, what would you guys do? So kid Good walks question. in, what's the first thing you guys are doing? Great question. Absolute first thing is we put every child through what's called a functional movement screen. So what we're doing is we're assessing their different movement patterns, right? Yeah. Uh, we're putting them into, into squats. We're putting them into overhead squats. We're seeing how they hinge. Do they hinge through their hips? Do they hinge through their back? You know, mm. um, what's their overhead range like? Do, are they missing internal or external sh shoulder rotation? You know, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and basically we put them through a screen to assess how they're moving. And then, we check off, hey, you're good with this, this, and this, and you're not in a good position in right. this and this. And you know what? We really will want to take care of that. Like we'll be thinking of that in our minds as we right. go about the programming. So step one is a detailed assessment. Mm -hmm. And step two is diving into the programming and explaining as clearly as possible to the children why we're making the adjustments we're making. Um and just going into the programming. In some cases, children are maybe too young to even have it register exactly what you're doing, but they're still able to. They're, to, they're, they, they're still in. They, they're, they're like, okay, the, I'm, I'm, I'm in with the program you're yeah, designing. They're, for they're, me. they're changing yeah. the patterns, how we're, how we're cueing them up to change them, and they're just developing better patterns before it becomes a problem. So, yeah. yeah. So which is which is great. So you're 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 assessing baseline. So you're getting like where are you now? Uh, what can we improve on? And then I'm assuming you guys like Measure. do retest yes. along the way to make two, sure two three months later or beyond, depending on the the scheduling, we're doing uh, testing and retesting. So also aside from the the patterning that we check out, we also like to do actually performance tests as well. So we'll test different metrics of of physical performance. What is your what is your vertical? What are your sprint times? What are different tests on different types of strength and conditioning tests right. that we do? And then we can remeasure those every like, you know, two, three months typically. And yeah. then you just see the objective improvements. You see they're moving better. They're better. They're performing better and all that stuff. So that makes sense. And then when we're talking about, you know, high, high level athletes, like when we're talking elite level, these these kids like they're pretty close to being the same. Right. Yeah. So when we're talking elite, we're talking maybe. Um, you know, being able to jump an inch higher or run a second faster or, yes. you know, jump, um, you know, 10 centimeters more, yeah. whatever it happens to be. And, and so maybe a program like this gives them just that little bit extra that just sets them Yes. Up, you and know. you know what the fascinating thing about that is, is that in the, in the cases of the athletes we have is that they're some of the highest level athletes in the, in the areas and in their sports, really and truly some of the very best, but 
because they don't have the the strength or conditioning background, they what happens when you have a whole thousands of kids that end up some of them end up at the top of the crop, right? They end yeah, up at the top. Yeah. But they still have a good amount of room for improvement if they don't have the exposure of certain things before because if your knees aren't in a good position while you squat or while you jump, not only does that put your knees at a risk of injury for certain yeah. ligaments, but that also decreases your output. Like you yeah. cannot generate as much force if your knees aren't in a good position. Yeah. So the athletes care about the output. So yeah, absolutely. There's room so. for improvement when you actually put a focus on these things. Yeah, and which is you know, and it's also a great addition um, for them because you know they're training in their sports. Um, now they can have a little bit of, you know, one-to-one -one time or, or they can come in as their whole team yeah. and, and then work through and it kind of builds even more camaraderie, um, and gives them another avenue to be involved with other community members, um, and other coaches and trainers, which also kind of keeps them out of trouble. Yeah. Right. Oh, yes, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I also wanted to touch, a, true. touch right. on that point of like mentorship and role model in terms of, you know, eating right. Uh, sleeping well, um, keeping your, you know, focus on school and sports activities and maybe not so much on other activities. Yes, that... that's right. Because you, like, there's that old adage of, you know, you become not exactly the average of the people you surround yourself with, but you're just more inclined to have the same sharing of thought as the people you surround yourself with, right? Absolutely. So the type of people you and I surround ourselves with, that, that helps shape how we are and even to a more extent, uh, the children at a more at an age where they're more like sponges and they're really exactly. going to have influence from people around them. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, no, I think that covers, you know, really what I wanted to highlight about some of the other things that, um, that you're doing. Is there anything else that you would want to share with somebody about whether it's personal training or your work with athletes that you think like, if I could only just get this message out. Yeah. Um, um yeah, you know, I guess, one of the most important things I've found is that physical training, you know, with or without me involved, someone going through uh, the journey of getting in, say, better shape, better health, um, better numbers on blood tests, you know, right? Things yeah. that things that people care about. It's not just a it's not a shallow endeavor. Like you can strive for a greater version of yourself in your in a physical sense that will open the door to you mm -hmm. being a better version of yourself in an emotional sense, having more emotional fortitude or having a better mm -hmm. mindset towards all aspects of your life, you know? Absolutely. Because not every worker, I mean, you know, I, I train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu yeah. and like, you know, I got some high level guys that I train with guys and go, girls. Mm -hmm. Um, and some days I'm in there and I feel like a million bucks. And then other days, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm losing my matches. And some days you feel like, do I even know, do I know Jiu Jitsu? I mean, I've only been doing it for X amount of years, <laughs> but some days you leave the club and you're like, but then you have your camaraderie and you work through those hard, emotional, mental moments that makes you so much stronger, which translates to anything else in life, any yes. other hardships, like it gives you, you start learning to, to, to deal with these things mm -hmm. and putting yourself through that process and showing the people you love the most that you, you take care of your body, right? For yeah. health reasons, you know, yeah. maybe some of it's physical reasons, but you take care of yourself physically, emotionally, mentally, if you have children, you want that to be a sub communication thing between you and them without having to directly tell them because parents throughout history are going to tell their children to eat their vegetables. But you got to, you got to live the part. You have to yeah. be that, that model, that role model for them without having to directly tell them. They have to look up to their parents and go, these are my parents. This must be how I want to turn into. Right. You know, so everybody should be eating their vegetable. You know, yeah, it's, 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 it's one of those for, like, yeah. d uh, what is it? What is it saying? Do as I say, not <laughs> as, as I, I do. do. Yeah, 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 um, right, so yeah. I think that it's important. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, setting this, that good example for the younger generation. And, and the same thing goes with, with you too. Now I have the pleasure of getting to work with people weekly in a, in a, in a very close way. And they really want to take are my advice and in a similar way they, they want to take your advice when you're when you're explaining things to them and we have a, the pleasure of 
of helping people in that way, just yeah. putting a focus on things is so important. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, awareness is key. Um, get, gathering the skills and, and re realizing that being act physically active, um, is so much more than just like, I want to build my bicep muscles, yeah. right? Like it's just, yeah. it's so much more. And I think if people really gave it a, a try and, and if they got some guidance would really help propel them forward. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Agreed. Well, I appreciate you coming by so much. This was a, an Thank awesome you for talk. Me. This I think is a lot of I fun. think yeah. uh, you know a lot of great information for people to take away. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, you know we're we're live, so yeah. uh, you know say hello via chat, ask any questions. Uh, if if it, if you're asking questions after the Facebook Live, like give us a day or two just you know to answer um, answer those questions. We'll do our best to get back to you quickly. And then of course, once this video ends. Um, you'll see a screen come up with all of our contact detail. If, uh, for example, you want to get in contact with me or if you want to get in contact with Marco, um, you'll have those details. Yeah. There. You can reach out to us, you know. But awesome. at the very least, hope you enjoyed our conversation. Yeah. And drew a few insights from that. So it's been a lot of fun. A lot yeah, of fun. Totally. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Bye, everybody. See you, everybody.